Hello, this is Justin O'Krahor from Scout Work, and I'm going to talk about practical dashboards for project managers. Project managers communicate a lot with stakeholders, so if we can automate some of it, so much the better. Just to introduce Scout Work, we help managers achieve their demanding assignments by giving them consulting, coaching, and training. And we focus on the delivery of their priority initiatives. So basically, it's coaching to get the work done. The team is compact, international, and uh, operates as a virtual team. And we area, we have offerings in two main areas. One of them, as I say, is project coaching, where we're actually looking at current projects and we're aiming to get immediate improvements for business. Quite separately from that, training. Training is different because you train people, they go away, and if you're lucky, then they apply what they learn. So the, the feedback cycle is usually much slower with training compared to coaching. We do online uh, coaching sessions, which take two half days and have member people from different companies at once who can trigger ideas off each other. And as another example, we do exam PMP exam, which is a five day workshop. We have some rather nice participant sound bites. And we serve um, quite a range of different sectors, and we support everybody from small and medium enterprises right up. By definition, the smaller ones, you may not know the names, but the bigger ones, you see some of them there, and um, I'm sure you'll recognize some or many of them. And we operate throughout the world. Um, so let's talk about the agenda. We're going to talk about how dashboards streamline project work. What the KPIs are, are and short they should be on the on the dashboard, and then I've got do-it-yourself guidelines so that you can try it yourself afterwards. So we just remind ourselves that the project delivers a thing, you know, an item, you know, a machine, a car, or something like that, or a service. And a service will be, for example, we want to do a help desk. We want to set up the help desk. Setting it up is a project. Um, how you know how do people access it? What what is the scope? What are the hours? Um, how do we advertise to others and so on? Or a change of state, for example, a company might apply for um, a quality accreditation and get it, and doing that requires a project. Sometimes other words are used for project, but that's the way we use it here um, to correspond to that terminology in the Project Management Institute. And here are some example projects. You can look at them. Optimizing a supply chain to minimize carbon footprint, for example, or automating a production line and so on. So how do they the dashboard streamline project work? Well, they reduce the burden. We have to talk to lots of people and keep them um, up to date and happy, as it were, with the project. And if we can send them a link and say, look, if you want to know, just have a look there, then we don't have to spend our time. But it also means that they're more up to date um, than they would be. Um, and then they're less likely to get surprises. So I've got an example here of what I say, what is a, a dashboard? It's a, a visual display of data with various key performance indicators. It's got the data in real time, and it may have several parameters. This one here, I'm going to show it to you later, um, is derived from one set of data on a predictive type project. So who needs to see the data? Well, anyone who's a stakeholder, um, you will have different versions of it, of detail, and some of it will be more confidential than others and so on. But there may be a lot of data that you can allow people to see um, quite widely. And if your way of doing this is to put it through a link, um, well, then so much the better, because then you don't have to get involved yourself to update everybody. Now, project teams don't usually like reporting. Uh, they just say, why don't you let us get on with the work? But the reason is, if you're um, prioritizing projects in a company and you've got two or three and some of them have difficulties, maybe the solution is prioritizing one over the other. And you can only do that if you've got comparable picture. You can't have completely different formats of reporting from different projects. And you certainly can't have people who, who refuse to tell you what's going on. But if you provide da that dashboard to automate this, um, then you can uh, not only can you see the, the information uh, without having to go around to each project and ask them, um, but also the, uh, the, the best practice can be 
rolled out across all the projects so that all projects benefit from improvements in the dashboards. So one less job to do, um, and uh, it's definitely a benefit. Anything that takes you out of the loop when you're doing a project is helpful. So what key performance indicators should be on the dashboard KPIs? Well, I've got three groups there. Um, they're, they're not exactly random, but they're selected by me, if you like. Um, for example, on the agile side, side um, a burn down chart is one of the things that we might like to communicate to people. On a predictive project, um, I've taken the earn value management parameters here, cost performance index and schedule performance index, and uh, they're really, really useful. Um, uh, though you, you may require some effort to, to understand how they work, but if you can, they're very, very useful for, for predicting. And very often what people want to know is, is the project on time, you know, and is it within budget and so on? And these are parameters that, that communicate that. And then for all projects, regardless whether they're agile or predictive, we've got things like open issues and risks and so on. So they could also be communicated in, in, a, in a dashboard. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to use a minimum configuration. I'm not showing you how to use Google. I'm showing you how to do dashboards. And all the other similar products would, would have similar uh, functionality. So as I say, what I'm aiming for is to give the basic idea of how you do it. And to do that, I need to swap the, um, the, the screen that I'm showing you. So I'm just going to bring up another one now. Here we are. And uh, this is some data. What I'm looking at here, it's agile burn down data uh, that I have for a project. So the key thing about the data is that it must be in a format that all of the data for each point is in one row and that you have a column for every single parameter. Now, that's exactly what you do with a, a pivot table as well. So it's not new, but it's rather important that all the data is there. So that's simple. And then the next thing that I do is that I highlight um, the the, the um, data that I want to copy across and get into a, a chart, copy. And then I go onto a separate tab and I insert a chart. Now I've already done it as you can see here. And when I've done that, this here is the very data that I showed you a moment back. Um, if, for example, I delete some of this data, uh, just to show you, if you look, you will see that the data has, in fact, gone back up. So what this is, is, for example, a burn down chart in Agile world. You've got so many story points. Um, you're, you're reckoning to have completed them in 15 iteration days. And this is where you got to on each day. So you, you track it and you can see more or less if you're on, on track. Now, then the next thing that we need to do with this chart here is to make it visible to anybody. And one of the ways is under share, we've got publish to web, and then we can get a link uh, just for that tab. We don't have to show everything. We just pick the bit that we want. And we get this tab here, this um, uh, data. And then we can share that. And we can also co compress it, obviously, and then share a much shorter link. There are other ways of showing it, but that's all I'm going to show now. So there are three basic steps. You have your data, you put it into columns, um, and then you make sure that all the parameters that you need are on the page. You copy that and you paste it onto a blank page using insert chart. And then you get a chart and you can play around with the, the parameters, the size of it and all that sort of thing. And then the third thing that you do is you make it visible. Those are the three things. Now, in this example, you will see that I've also added in data about our courses, our schedule at the time this video was made. And uh, this comes from another table, which is here. And I do the same sort of thing. I collect that data and I, I uh, copy it into this part here through a chart. And uh, then the point about this is that you've got two different types of data showing up on the same dashboard, just like on a car. You know, you've got um, oil pressure and you've also got um, miles per hour or miles, the kilometers per hour, whatever. Let me show you another one, earned value management. 
So earned value, um, I'm going to remind you when we go back to the slides, but basically we look at the, um, we're trying to get everything into one place to show us progress um, regarding schedule and time and cost. Now, that's the way it normally works. And earned value is a number which is taken by looking at the work that's done, identifying what the budget was for that work, and then we compare this earned value with both the actual cost, money we've actually spent, or where we should have got in terms of what we call plan value. In other words, how much we should have spent by now. So we've got this table here. We um, highlight all of it, including right down to the bottom. Then I went on to another new page, and then I inserted a chart. And here you'll see that there are actually two sets of data. And the reason for that is that here, I also have two sets. This is the original data, and then this is the calculated data, which I've done using the spreadsheet. And I can show both of them at once on this here. Now, again, like the earlier one, if I say delete some of the data, just to illustrate, I delete it now. If I do that, you'll see that the, the, the data on the dashboard has gone back uh, so many dates. So again, we can share this data here, and it's really powerful because cost performance index says if the number is above one, we're getting good value for money. Otherwise, we're getting bad, which is a better way of looking at it than, than budget. Huh? And um, performance schedule performance index, again, it's the same. If it's above one, it means we're going faster than we planned. If it's below one, we're not doing as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the share and go back to the slides to summarize all that. So here we are again on the slides. So we pick up the uh, Agile version first. What is burn down? Well, if you remember, um, in an Agile uh, world, we estimate the volume of work in story points. They're, they're not absolute, and they vary by team, but they're, they're consistent within a team. And these people say, well, we've got 150 story points, and we think over the 15 days of our iteration, we're going to bring we'll de deal with all of them. And then this here is the chart um, showing you where they got to on a particular day. And you can see they're more or less on track, which is, is, is worth knowing. That's very good. And velocity means how fast are you going? So it's, you know, how many story points per day or per cycle, whatever way you want to define it. So if you want to try that out, you can use the QR code there and it'll actually bring you to the live uh, chart that I showed you. It won't allow you to edit anything. Indeed, it could have been set up so that you could, but I've just done it so that it gives you the um, basic access to that data to, to read against these slides. Okay, let's go back to the um, predictive project management here, earned value management. And we just remind ourselves, earned value uh, is represented by the original budget of the work that has been done. And then we compare that with the, the, the money that we should have spent, which is called plan value, and we compare it with the actual cost. Uh, it's like a credit card. When the money is gone, it's gone. When, when it goes through the system is, is not the thing that we're worried about. That's a typical um, book chart, if you like. They call this curve the S-curve because it, it, it looks like a flattened S. And in particular, it can go up, but it can't go down. You can't unspend money. And I've drawn two here, uh, uh, earned value and actual cost. Um, I've got them separately just so you can see them for illustrative purposes. But if earned value over planned value is more than one, then you're getting more value than you expected uh, it's sooner. So you're ahead on schedule. And if actual cost, earned value divided by actual cost is under one, then you're spending too much money for what you're getting. So basically, above one is good and below one is bad. And these are the two formulae. So again, there's um, a demo blackboard uh, dashboard, which you can get into there by scanning that code. So here are the guidelines for doing it yourself. Um, develop a minimum viable project of the dashboard. Get it working first. So you can always go back and change uh, you know, format and how good it looks and you know, how wide it is and all those sort of things. You can change everything, but get it working first. And as I say, I would focus on the process, not the tools. So you prepare a data table in a spreadsheet and the data should be in columns. You have all the parameters in each row. And if you put in breaks between lines, uh, the system uh, Excel will think, oh, that's the end of the table and you don't want that. 
So you don't want to put in formatting lines to make it look tidy or anything like that. You just leave them. And on that table, you can add extra columns for whatever it is you want to calculate. And then you'll be able to show them as well. Then you highlight that uh, table and you open a new spreadsheet and uh, you insert a table using the chart function. So you go into chart and then you pick up. And again, you can pick one of them. And if you don't like it, you can change it later so you can get going. And uh, then you set up the parameters to publish the dashboard. In other words, you, you look for the link that you can send out to people and say, hey, if you want to know what's happening, here's the link. And it makes sense to view this in an anonymous browser, for example, on your tablet that's completely independent, just to check and see what other people actually see. Make sure they don't see the wrong stuff by mistake. Um, and then you make any adjustments to format until it until it's the way you like it. It makes sense to set up another table in the spreadsheet to say who should have access to this. Um, and then you can make whatever arrangements you need to make sure. But obviously, depending on the data, you may or may not be comfortable with it going anywhere. Eh? And um, you could have different uh, dashboards, for example, which are copies of each other for different levels of, of management that, that may have different knowledge access. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's useful to you. Thanks for your participation. And uh, if you have any project uh, issues that you'd like to discuss with me, feel free. You have my phone number and email address on the screen. Thanks very much.